Welcome back, everybody, to the Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here on MLB The Show 20. As today, we got a lot of things to go over going through the whole month of May. Multiple pretty big trades, I would say, coming up as well, including one early here in the episode, along with a couple games. So get your popcorn ready, because it's going to be a fun one. So I've been going around looking for a few prospects. The name that's caught my eye the most is Dylan Carlson, the outfielder from the Cardinals. I'm really trying to get a deal done here, but it's really challenging. And the only way I could probably swindle a trade would be to add either Kevin Newman or Cole Tucker somewhere, which I don't really want to do. So for right now, this isn't happening, but we're close. Maybe I'll have to throw one of those guys in, but for right now, we are close to a deal with Carlson, but not quite. A few other guys we could look at include Taylor Trammell from the Padres. Another one is Dustin May from the Dodgers. I like this one because he's already MLB ready. And the Dodgers are a really good team. And maybe they think they're a couple pieces away. Maybe they're more willing to trade him. Another guy is Christian Pache from the Braves. To me, he's Ronald Acuna light. Very well-rounded player. Obviously, he's not as good as Acuna. But I think he can be the, the B version of Acuna. So we are going to make a trade here with the Cleveland Indians involving relief pitcher Emmanuel Classe. Classe was part of the Corey Kluber trade this past offseason that sent the ace over to Texas. And he pitched really well last season in Texas, currently in AAA with the Cleveland Indians. And with his upside and age, I think it makes a ton of sense for this team to go out and get him. And the Pirates would make a deal for 22-year-old relief pitcher Emmanuel Classe. ESPN's Jeff Passan has reported it is a four-player trade. Class A is the only one going to the Pirates. Going to Cleveland will be center fielder Isaiah Larkin. He could be a good bench bat. Uh, right fielder Bartolo Gonzalez is just a throw-in. And then Sam Howard, a little bit older. He's very raw, but maybe has a little bit of upside down the line. So the Indians are getting a few players, but no one who really jumps off the table. And this is a steal, in my opinion, for the, pot, for the Pirates. Three players who probably won't really see Major League action anytime soon for a 22-year-old talented reliever who can make an impact on day one. So I think this is a really, really nice trade for the Pirates. And Emmanuel Classe should be a great addition. Uh, he will start in the Major Leagues. Unfortunately, all three of his minor league options have already been used, which does kind of hurt a little bit. But for now, uh, he will be with the Major League team. And then Nick Birdie will be moved down to AAA to create that roster spot. So Class A will slide in as one of the middle relievers. And remember, at the end of last episode, we signed Aroidas Vizcayano. He will be one of the setup relievers. So two new guys in the bullpen who can hopefully make a positive impact. The Pirates are headed down to South Beach as they're going to be taking on the Miami Marlins, who have been the biggest surprise so far in Major League Baseball. One month through the season, sitting at a record of 18 and 13 and I mean this team is by far the worst roster on paper in the National League and they are over 500. Here's a look at both lineups for tonight's game 1 to 9 as Pablo Lopez on the mound for the Fish. Currently 4 and 1 with a 3.93 ERA. Not bad, but not great as Josh Bell going to ground into the double play. Bell coming off a really solid April hitting over 320. As Joe Musgrove on the mound for the Pirates, he's also having himself a really good start to the season. 1.85 ERA, 0.85 whip, as he's going to get Jonathan VR swinging. And then a couple batters later, there's a 6-4-3 double play. Bill had to step off the bag, but he makes a really nice play, tagging the runner instead. So credit to him for that one. Let's move to the second. Gregory Polanco better double check that one. As he checks, swings to the high heat. Here's Kevin Newman, the next batter. Shop and gap. That would actually be a double as the center fielder gets to it too slow. And Newman is going to be able to capitalize and get the extra base hit. That'll bring up Colin Moran, who swings at the high fastball. That'll get him out. Now on to the bottom of the second. That ball is placed perfectly into center. Goes off of the glove of Kevin Newman. A run will come home. He doesn't even bother to throw it home, and that'll be an RBI. Now into the third. Here's Jonathan VR. More blind than Helen Keller. What are you swinging at, sir? Let's go to the uh, top of a fourth now. 
as the play from third is going to be unsuccessful. And the Pirates now have two runners on with now two outs for Colin Moran. High fly ball into right, and it would be caught. So the score remains 1-0 as we move on to the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's Garrett Cooper, the leadoff batter, going down on the changeup. Nice pitch from Musgrove. As this has been a nothing short of a pitcher's duel, Brian Anderson, he's just a window shopper because he's just looking. And then Joe Musgrove might as well get the hat trick as the next batter, Matt Joyce, also goes down looking Musgrove's 6K of the day. On to the fifth inning now. Here is Josh Bell. Places that one very nicely into right center field for extra bases. And the Pirates now got themselves a runner in scoring position with just one out. That would bring up Gregory Polanco. That one's high. Deep into center. Back at the track at the wall. But it would be caught. Almost a home run for Polanco. But just not quite. Bell does advance to third safely. So that would bring up Kevin Newman, who's just going to ground out to short. Ending the inning. Still 1-0 Miami as we move on to the bottom of the fifth. Here's Jonathan VR. He's going to go into the left center field gap for a no-out double. And he would end up scoring. My clip decided not to save. So that's fun. Marlins now lead it 2-0 as we move on to the seventh. Brian Anderson going to start the inning off with a single so Joe Musgrove starting to slow down a little bit. Maybe the Pirates should consider taking him out of the game. Maybe not quite as Matt Joyce swings at the ugly slider. I don't know why he swings at that. Next batter, that would be John Birdie. Places that one swiftly into right for a single. And then the following batter, Jorge Alfaro, gets that one to center. The throw to the plate from Reynolds is in time. And Brian Anderson is gunned down. Nice play. In center from Brian Reynolds, stopping the run. Score will remain 2-0 as we move on to the 8th. Speaking of Brian Reynolds, he's going to get that one into center. Nice catch by the outfielder. Pablo Lopez still pitching a shutout. But Adam Frazier with two outs going to hit a single into center. And with Josh Bell next up, anything can happen. He's one of the most dangerous hitters of the National League. And that will be proven right here as with one swing at the bat, Bell will tie this game up at two, getting that one into the second deck. His seventh home run of the season, 406 feet for Bell. And we are all tied up at two. This game just got real interesting, folks. As Pablo Lopez, his day would be done. Excellent game from Lopez. And Adam Conley would enter from the Marlins. Adequate 4.41 ERA. As here's Kevin Newman with a runner on. He's going to get a single into right center. So now two on, two outs, extremely important at bat here for Colin Moran, and he would capitalize. Not quite. Nice shot from Moran, but it would be caught into center. So let's move to the eighth inning now, or the bottom of the eighth. Emmanuel Classe into the game for Pittsburgh, his first major league appearance this season in his Pirate debuts. He's going to strike out Miguel Rojas for his first strikeout with the Pirates. Here is Garrett Cooper, however. With two outs, getting a single into right. So now two on, two out. Big at bat here for Brian Anderson, and he will capitalize with a single. Run headed home, the throw to Bell, over to Stallings, and he is going down at the plate. The Pirates make another nice play. Polanco to Bell to Stallings, and this game will remain a tie at two. Let's go to the ninth. Jacob Stallings, who's had himself a great defensive game. Not as great offensively, but a few batters later, Brian Reynolds rips it into left, and the Pirates will take a 4-2 lead, 433 feet. An absolute moonshot for Reynolds, his third home run of the season. And now Keon Kella on for the save. He has a pretty bad ERA, but a whip under one, going for his seventh save of the season. He's going to get the strikeout right there. And then here's Jorge Alfaro with two outs. The final uh, chance for the Marlins. He's going to get a single into left. So it's still possible. And then Francisco Cervelli, the former Pirate, gets that one over the fence and right. And this game is tied up at four. Cervelli, the longtime starter at catcher here for the Pirates, joined the Marlins this offseason and is getting some revenge on his former team. Here's Jonathan Villar striking out which means we are headed to extra innings, baby. 
On to the 10th now, Brendan Kinsler, the veteran in for the Marlins, currently with a sub-2 ERA. Maybe that will change as here is Kevin Newman with two outs. He's shopping gap into left. That'll be a double for Newman. And now the Pirates have a prime opportunity to drive him home. Here's Colin Moran. This time, he would capitalize as it goes off the wall in right center. Newman scores, and Pittsburgh will make it a 5-4 ball game. Big RBI double from Colin Moran. Jose Osuna would draw an intentional walk. Jacob Stallings would draw a walk as well, and that'll load the bases with two outs. And the Marlins will make a pitching change. Sterling Sharp into the game. He's had himself a very nice season, but I'm confused why the Marlins would put in a pitcher before the Pirates enter their pinch hitter, which would be Cole Tucker. And he would fly out, so it doesn't really matter as we move to the bottom of the 10th. Aroides Vizcayano into the game for the Pirates. His first game this season only pitched in four appearances last year, so he might be kind of rusty as he will walk Miguel Rojas to start the inning. Then Jesus Aguilar will strike out, and once again, the Marlins are down to their final out. It'll go onto the legs of Brian Anderson. He draws a walk. Two on, two outs now for Matt Joyce. That will go over the glove of Moran. Single into left. This time, the Pirates cannot make the throw in time, and this game is tied up at five. John Birdie would strike out, and this means we are headed to the 11th inning. This game has really gotten crazy these past few innings. Here's Josh Bell with two outs. He will get a single into uh, right, so that'll be his uh, second hit of the day. And the Pirates will be unable to capitalize as Gregory Polanco will ground out. So that means that the Marlins have an opportunity to get the walk off. Here's Jorge Alfaro striking out. Now for runner on first and one gone. It'll be Jonathan the yard. He's getting that one into right center. Uh, we got the runner, Diaz. He's going to go to the plate. The throw is not in time. And number 69. Nice. Diaz, the pinch runner with the walk-off run. VR gets the walk-off base hit. And the Miami Marlins get the win here over the Pirates by a score of 6-5. to five. Miami improves to 9-13. and 13. Pirates go down to 13-19. and 19. Looking at the numbers, three-hit day for Bell and Newman. And the bats were good once Pablo Lopez left the game. Home runs for Reynolds and Bell. Uh, we got doubles for Newman, who had two, Bell and Moran, and they all drove in runs. Joe Musgrove played very well. Class A was decent. Kella blew the save, and then Aroides Vizcayano just looks rusty up to this point. Despite good starting pitching, the bullpen blew it for the Pirates, and as well, you could say that for the Barlins, I guess. Their bullpen did kind of blow it as well. Looking at their numbers, VR, Anderson, Birdie, and Alfaro, each with multi-hit games. Obviously, the R had the walk-off hit, double and triples for Jonathan the R. Home run for Francisco Cervelli. They drove in runs along with Corey Dickerson, Matt Joyce, and John Birdie. Pablo Lopez pitched extremely well in this game, but it's Sterling Sharp who will end up with the win. Conley and Kinsler sort of blew it. Sharp did his job out of the pen. Really the only reliever for either team to do well. So after some simming, we're 22 and 24. Three games back of first place in the division, four games back of the second wild card, and the Pirates are going to be making another trade, and I would say it's a pretty big one, involving the Philadelphia Phillies, as Jeff Passan tweets that the Phillies agree to send former top pick Mickey Moniak to the Pirates in exchange for relief pitching prospect Scott Foster and outfielder Charlie Tilson. Mickey Moniak was the number one pick in the 2016 draft by the Phillies, and it hasn't really worked out for either side. Moniak hasn't really developed quite the way that the Phillies were hoping for. So now they're going to move on from him and he will join the Pirates. He will likely start off in AAA for now, pretty much replacing Charlie Tilson, who was previously in AAA. So Tilson was the starting center fielder there. And now it will be Moniak, who certainly has more upside than Charlie Tilson. Moniak will bat second versus righties and then versus lefties for right now. We don't have him playing, but that is subject to change for the time being. And then another trade, JT Riddle. He is now going to be on his way out, and he will also 
be headed to the Philadelphia Phillies. As Jeff Passan tweets in a separate trade, the Pirates will be sending utility infielder JT Riddle along with prospects Joe Jacques and Nick Birdie to the Phillies in exchange for Adonis Medina. Looking at uh, some of the players we're giving up, Nick Birdie played a little bit in the majors this year, sort of struggled. He was sent down once. Vizcayano and Classe were acquired. And then Joe Jacques, currently in double A with the Altoona Curve. Nothing crazy, but he does have some potential. So the Phillies are going to be getting a, go a good piece in Riddle who can maybe make an impact immediately. Birdie is borderline MLB talent, and then Jacques has potential. But they are going to give, be giving up a talented prospect in Adonis Medina, who I think can be a great piece for this Pirates team down the line. He is very raw, but could be something special in this rotation. The Phillies are pretty much set when it comes to starting pitching prospects, even though their major league pitching staff isn't the best. For right now, Medina will be the second starter in the AAA rotation as the Pirates now going to be facing off against the Chicago Cubs. Surprisingly, the Cubbies are worse than Pittsburgh this season. Chicago dead last in the NL Central division as it'll be Trevor Williams on the mound today for Pittsburgh, 3-3 three three of the 2.7 ERA. He certainly has not done too bad. Here's a look at your lineups. I didn't get the original uh, graphic, so here you go. This one doesn't do too bad either. As Javier Baez leading off, he's going to get that one to second. However, we got an error on the play, and that'll be a not a base hit, but it will provide a base runner. That was Frazier who uh, caused the error, and now everything has decided to start to implode. Starting with Jason Hayward getting the RBI double. Baez scores from first. Cubs lead at 1-0. But this is just the start. Next batter, Chris Bryant gets that one past Brian Reynolds. Actually, Reynolds bobbles it. That'll be an RBI double. Chicago leads it 2-0. But boy, we are not done next yet. Next batter, Wilson Contreras. With a single into center, Chris Bryant will score. Cubs now lead it 3-0. There are still no outs, by the way. But we're not quite done yet. Next batter, Anthony Rizzo gets that one into left. Contreras rounding third. He's going to head home. And the Cubs lead it 4 to nothing. Still no outs, by the way. What a start to this game for the Chicago Cubs. Absolutely dominant so far. And then Kyle Schwarber here. Gets that single into center. However, Rizzo would be gunned down at the plate. So the first out of the game does come off a hit technically. And now things will start to ease up for the Pirates as the pitcher has to come at bat here in the first. The Cubs batted around, scored four. But the Pirates are grateful they didn't score more. All the mound today for the Cubs will be the recently acquired Diego Garcia. Garcia was acquired in a trade this past April with the Yankees in exchange for shortstop prospect Nico Horner. Both Horner and Garcia are among the top prospects in baseball, and that could have a big impact on the major leagues these next few seasons is the leadoff batter. Brian Reynolds gets that one over the right fielder's glove. He was thinking three, and that's going to cost him as Reynolds is gunned down at second. So... Base running blunder there for Reynolds. Next batter is Adam Frazier. That'll be grounded to Kipnis, and the former Indian will bobble it. So that sort of makes up for the blunder by Reynolds. And that'll bring up Josh Bell. Light bat flip into right field. An absolute bomb. His 11th home run of the season, and the Pirates will cut the lead in half to two just like that. As Bell, who coming off an all-star campaign last year, has played even better this season. But the Cubs are going to try to get some damage control done. On to the second inning, Jason Hayward going deep into right. And Chicago will make it 5-2. to two. Now on to the bottom of the second. Let's get some good pitching, shall we? Jose Osuna will strike out. Nice pitch from Diego Garcia, the low slider. On to the third inning now. Brian Reynolds, that ball is nearly gone. That one was just inches away from going over the fence, and he will gladly take a double this time rather than trying to leg out a triple. Josh Bell now up. He's going to go down looking on the outside slider. Questionable call by the umpire, but I'm sure Garcia isn't too mad, and I'm sure the Pirates aren't too mad because the next batter, Gregory Polanco, 
nearly sends that ball out of the stadium into the Allegheny River. And the Pirates are only down by one just like that. The eighth home run of the season for Gregory Polanco as it is now 5-4. to four. On to the fourth, Trevor Williams will get Chris Bryant going down looking. Now bottom four, Jacob Stallings up that one into center. And Ian Happ with the glove work, making a really nice defensive play. Take another look. Happ in center, making it look like light work. Now into the bottom of the fourth, here's the pitcher Trevor Williams with a single in the right. Colin Moran digging for third. And the Pirates have two runners on scoring position with two outs for Brian Reynolds, who's two for two in this game with two doubles, but he's not going to get a third quite yet as that one would be caught by Kyle Schwarber. Game remains five to four. Let's move to the fifth now. Trevor Williams getting a nice strikeout of the catcher, Wilson Contreras. Two gone now for Ian Happ. Gets that one a long way into right center field. Brian Reynolds can only watch from center as that'll be Happ's eighth home run of the season, making it 7-4 to four and ending Trevor Williams' day. Robert Erland now in for Pittsburgh, and he's had a great season as for a long reliever. As a free agent this offseason, I think the Pirates could get an interesting trade package for him at the deadline, and the inning would end for Erland just as it started. Nice glove work on the mound, as let's now go to the bottom of the fifth, 7-4 currently, the Pirates got to start their comeback, and they're going to get right to work as Josh Bell going oppo poppo, his second home run of the day, 403 feet, his 12th of the season, and the Pirates are now only down 5-7. to seven. But the fun is just getting started for Pittsburgh. Here's Gregory Polanco getting that one of a right center gap. Once again, inches away from being a home run, would have been his second of the day. But nonetheless, that'll be a nice double for Polanco with one out as Pittsburgh has a prime opportunity to drive him home. And they would do just that as Colin Moran rips a single into right. And now the Pirates have runners on first and second. Still one out. And the day would end for Dievi Garcia. Trevor McGill into the game for the Cubs and that 5.93 ERA tells you the whole story. But he's actually going to get the Pirates to ground into a double play. The third baseman, Bryant, will tag Moran, and he will throw out Jose Osuna at first. On to the sixth inning now. Hello, Kevin Newman. Nice spin move at short, getting the out. And now Jason Hayward going to strike out lefty on lefty crime. You know Jason Hayward struggles against those lefties. On to the bottom of the sixth now. Alec Mills and for the Cubs, 1.93 ERA. That's a lot more respectable. He has pitched very well this season, but has he pitched well enough as Jacob Stallings gets that ball higher than J.R. Smith during game one of the NBA Finals over the fence and left. And this ball game is now tied up at seven. So that first inning tobacco really isn't an issue for the Pirates. Here's Brian Reynolds now already has two doubles. Why not go ahead and get the hat trick? As that'll be a stand-up one-out double for Reynolds. And then Adam Frazier up. He's going to drive in a run. And the Pirates will take the lead. Unfortunately for Pittsburgh, the next batter, who was Josh Bell, while he intimidated the Cubs pitcher, he would be out. So it's only 8-7. to seven. As now Emmanuel Classe into the game for the Pirates. It's been a rough start to the season for Classe as he does strike out Kyle Schwarber right there. Runners on the corners, two outs for Ian Happ, who has had a great day. The diving catch, a pair of walks, and a home run. He's going to strike out as Classe gets out of the jam. Now Jeremy Jeffress, the veteran and former Milwaukee Brewer, into the game now for the Chicago Cubs. Is Jose Osuna up at the plate. That one is placed very nicely into left center, and that'll be a double for Osuna with two outs. Maybe the Pirates can they extend their lead a little bit, or maybe not, as Jake Stallings, Jacob Stallings sorry, will strike out. On to the eighth inning, Class A still in. He's going to strike out Jason Kipnis, his former Indian teammate, for like what probably about three minutes let's move to the bottom of the eighth now Kyle Ryan into the game for the uh, Cubs he's gonna get a nice strikeout right there on Brian Reynolds and now we move to the ninth Keon Kella in he's had 11 saves this season 14 save opportunities and that ERA is ugly 6.75 not pretty he is gonna strike out Jason Hayward though Chris Bryant will draw a walk and the tying run is aboard first with one out 
that would bring up Wilson Contreras. He's just a window shopper because he's just looking. Cubs down to their final out. It's Anthony Rizzo. That one will go into right. Polanco barely makes the catch. And the Pirates get the win by a score of 7-8. to eight. Very exciting ball game. Lots of hits. Lots of home runs. Multi-home run game for Josh Bell. Looking at the box score, the Cubs played really well. 3-8 game for Anthony Rizzo. They had home runs from Jason Hayward and Ian Happ. They both drove in runs along with Chris Bryant, Anthony Rizzo, and Wilson Contreras. Diego Garcia really struggled, but it's Alec Mills who ends up getting the loss. Meanwhile, for the Pittsburgh Pirates, their bats weren't too much worse. Actually, a little bit better because they had more hits and they scored more runs. As Brian Reynolds, he had three doubles. Josh Bell had two home runs, three RBIs. And also home runs for Polanco and Stallings. Uh, RBIs for Frazier, Polanco obviously, Bill obviously, Stallings obviously, and Moran. Trevor Williams struggles as Robbie Erling gets the win. Emmanuel Classe with the hold and Keon Kello with the save, his 12th of the season. So now we're going to simulate for rest of May. Pirates at 27-32, and 32, currently 4th in the division. Cubs still in dead last. And we are right at the MLB Draft, and that is what uh, the main focus of next episode will be. Looking at the standings, currently seven games back of the Reds, who are in first place of the division. Eight and a half games back of the second wild card, which is currently the Atlanta Braves. Marlins currently still the top wild card. Credit to them. They are playing well. The Pirates are going to make one more trade here. It's, it's a small one, kind of, but it is a big name. The big name is not Blake Wyman, however. He is being traded to the Mets in exchange for Tim Tebow. Tebow time in Pittsburgh, baby. The former NFL starting quarterback who has more playoff wins than Matthew Stafford. I hate to say that, but it's true. He is headed to Pittsburgh. And Tim Tebow, we will be making sure he makes his major league debut this season. Ironic, it's for Pittsburgh because Tim Tebow beat the Pittsburgh Steelers in a playoff game back when he was with the Broncos. Looking at the numbers, Frazier and Reynolds are doing solid. Josh Bell has been outstanding. Rating going up, potential going up, and he is a legit MVP candidate, even though the team isn't doing great. He has been putting up insane numbers, OPS over 1,000, and I'm sure we could get a King's Ransom for him at the trade deadline, but forget that. Josh Bell is a building block for this team long term. He is not going anywhere. I'm just going to say that right now for you. Unless we get the top three prospects in baseball, but that's not happening. Gregory Polanco is doing solid. Kevin Newman is playing pretty well, uh, quietly getting that average up. Colin Moran has been solid. Uh, Osuna has been pretty much average to below average. Kevin Kramer has been meh, but he's more of a bench bat. Jacob Stallings isn't doing too bad. Jared Dyson's been bad. Luke Maley has been really bad. Might have to send him down to AAA. Eric Gonzalez, not too bad. Cole Tucker, not great. And then Jason Morton, not great either. So the bench bats are really struggling. Looking at the rotation, Chris Archer, kind of bad. But he's a free agent at the end of the year. Joe Musgrove, look at that. He has been outstanding this year. Trevor Williams has been good outside of that Cubs game we just watched. Mitch Keller, not great. Steven Brault, not great. Robbie Erlin still pitching really well. Feliz, below average. Rodriguez, not too bad. Emmanuel Classe, not great, but he's still young. Kyle Crick, wait till you see these numbers. Oh, boy. 9.45 ERA, whip above two. He has been a disaster. Might have to send him to AAA. Aroitis Vizcayana is playing really well, and then Keon Kella is not. And I want to highlight Kella real quick because he's a free agent at the end of the year, and he was a guy I was planning on trading at the deadline for a really good offer. But just based on his play this year... I don't know if we're going to get that great of an offer. He is currently ecstatic right now. I don't know how he is above replacement. I guess the whip isn't too bad. But the ERA is bad. And I, I guess the ERA is a little bit misleading, but still not great. Looking at some of the important minor leaguers, Mickey Moniak is struggling. Travis Swaggart, who's actually been playing really well after a bad April. He's played a lot better here in the month of May. Looking at the pitching... I guess someone's hurt. I don't know why there's a four-man rotation. Brandon Waddle kind of struggling. Domingo Robles is playing well. I have not really talked about him at all, but 21 years old, 66 overall. 
with B potential, I mean, Robles has a chance to really be a building block on this team long term. And then AAA, Cabrian Hayes, he's a little bit cold, but still playing well. And then O'Neill Cruz is also playing well. So as long as Hayes and Cruz can continue to play well and hopefully have them up in the majors next season. Tim Tebow currently hitting 302. He has not played for our AAA team quite yet, but I'm sure he'll get acquainted. Uh, Adonis Medina, not great, but I guess he theoretically could be doing worse. And then the bullpen. Everybody's either doing really well or really bad. Look at Dovi Das Navarowskis' numbers. Very impressive, but we got some fives, some sixes. There's a two ERA for Blake. Uh, I forget his last name. And then look at this. Josh Bell, second for MVP, just behind Nolan Arenado. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to like button and subscribe. And as always, have a good one. Peace out.